Perhaps one of the most unique features of the APC64 are the eight touch strips. We can change the functionality of the touch strips with this collection of buttons here. Let's go through what each one of them does. First, don't forget that we can navigate around our track with either the encoder or the track select button. Let's navigate over to this electric piano sound and solo it. Currently, we're set to device mode for the touch strips. That means I can change parameters of the devices like the macros on this instrument called the Blue Lady. So let's turn up that pitch drift, the delay, and see that the touch strips are reflecting the macros of this instrument that we've selected. Turn up the noise. Now currently, only the first four touch strips are illuminated blue, which reflects the color of the track. And these four touch strips here are essentially non-functional because there's only four macros in this instrument. Well, let's go ahead and hold the device button and use the arrow key to navigate over to the next rack, which is the basic audio processing rack I have on this instrument. We have access to things like low cut, high cut, and reverb. So let's go ahead and play that again. Turn up the reverb dry wet, as well as the reverb size. Let's even go ahead and cut out more low frequencies. No matter how many devices you have in your track, you can always hold device and scroll around your racks with the navigational arrows. The next function we have is volume. Maybe this is a little self-explanatory, but the eight touch strips will now reflect the volume levels of each of the eight tracks. Let's go ahead and turn the drums down. And let's bring this triangle up. Right along with volume, we have panning as well. Let's go ahead and adjust the panning of those triangles. In fact, I think I brought the volume down a little bit too much, so let's switch back, bring the volume up. Push those to the right. And let's go ahead and move the vocal to the left. Let me solo our tops loop here and switch over to the send functionality. I've got a reverb and delay on my send tracks. So on track two, which is the top loop that we're listening to, we can control send A, which is a reverb. Hitting send again will give us access to send B, the delay. I want you to also notice too that as I do hit the send button, the screen will let us know which send we're changing. And since I only have sends A and B on this track, we're able to switch between those. And you can also notice that the LEDs on the touch strips reflect the current level of that send for each track. Same goes for volume, device, etc. The last functionality we have here is channel strip. So let's go ahead and navigate over to the drums. Let's solo them. And channel strip gives us access to the volume, the pan, and the sends for this single track. You'll notice that touch strip three here has got a red LED and will occasionally jump up like that. And that's because I've recorded automation. We're gonna talk about that in a future video. But if I touch this touch strip now, I can override that automation and introduce some reverb. Finally, we do have an option to turn off the touch strips so that you can have no mistakes happening if you just happen to graze them during a performance or maybe the crowd is getting a little too excited and a little too close. 
I'd like to also point out that at the top here, if we navigate away from session view, we can go into the custom mode and we could map one of these touch chips to say a low pass filter on the master track. To do that, all we have to do is go into MIDI map mode, click on the effect we'd like to map, and then move the corresponding touch strip. Now let's go out of MIDI map mode. Let's play our track. Now we've got a custom mapping, which if we go out of custom mode, we still have access to all of our normal functionality for these touch strips. In fact, I wouldn't even really need to custom map that per se, unless I really wanted to, because I could just use the encoder, scroll over to the master channel, go into device mode, and since that low pass filter is the fifth encoder on that performance rack, I have access to it right there. With also, by the way, a bunch of other really cool effects. These touch strips are really fun to use and really great for your workflow with their different functionality and you can get creative with mapping them in the custom mode as well.